So in this video, I am going to show you how to take a roller set out of a wig and then how to do um, just like a really simple like comb out um, and sort of a little bit of a style. Um, so I actually went through and I took a lot of the rollers out. Um, this wig is kind of strange. It's a little bit bald. Um, so it definitely has some like roller breaks in it and some weird patches, um, but I'm pretty sure once we brush it out, it'll be fine. Um, I've never styled this wig before, so I'm not really sure um, how it's going to behave. And that's one thing um, that you do kind of have to keep in mind when you are styling wigs and facial hair. Um, sometimes even if you styled like a hundred other synthetic wigs or a hundred other human hair wigs, um, you'll just get one that just does not behave in the same way as the others. And it's one of those things where like you can't um, get like down on yourself or feel really frustrated and feel like it's your fault um, just because sometimes you're just going to meet wigs that just do not want to work um, and that they're going to take like a little bit more um, intense work than others might. So don't always think that it's like something that you did wrong. It's very possibly just the way that like the wig is made or that the hair is made, if, especially if it's a synthetic one. Um, so don't always feel like it is your fault. Um, so you're going to want like a few basic things if you are taking your roller set out. Um, I've got like a little container where I'm putting all my rollers at. Um, I've got my little pin tray so I can put my pins right back on that. I'm really guilty sometimes of like I'll take a roller set out especially if I'm in um, a rush and I'll just kind of like throw everything all over a table. Um, it's always better to collect everything as you go, right? Um, and especially too if you're working in a space that's not necessarily your own. Um, you don't want to like create a mess in somebody else's workspace so it's always better I feel like if you can keep things as contained as possible. Um, I've got like my little container with all my brushes in it. Um, I've got containers of hairpins, bobby pins, um, anything I might need. Um, like I said, I've never worked on this wig before. It is a human hair wig, so um, I hit it with a little bit of heat from a blow dryer to help it finish drying. Um, but I don't personally have a wig dryer, so I just kind of let it like hang out overnight. Um, if it was a synthetic wig, just to remind everybody, I would have had to steam all of the rollers and I would not have been able to use my hair dryer on it. Um, and if I did, it would have had to be like on cool or you would have to build like a special little like um, kind of like makeshift wig dryer around it in order to do that. So always remember, um, do not put heat on your synthetic wigs. This one is human, so technically I could go through with like a curling iron if I felt like any of the curls weren't great. Um, but I'm just going to kind of show you like a quick like comb out and stuff because this wig isn't really for anything. Um, I realized when I was doing it, I thought I had enough pink rollers um, to do the entire front with that. I didn't. I have. I know that I have them somewhere, um, but I'm not actually sure where they are. So this roller set is not necessarily how you would probably ever do one. Um, I had this whole side was in um, like the larger like gray rollers, and then the side is in like the smaller pink ones. So that's a little bit weird. Um, not something that I would recommend doing. But um, since this is all just for example. I figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal and I did have these weird kind of like short bang pieces that I couldn't really do anything with either um, so this wig is definitely just kind of an interesting experience here um, so that when you're doing it I always like take my rollers out from the back um, forward so that way it's not like crazy hair um, everywhere you can kind of like um, keep it more contained this way I feel like so it's kind of like the opposite of like how you put them in like I like to put them in from the front to the back But then I like remove it um, from the back to the front um, Just so that way usually the front I feel like in wigs It's a little bit more delicate the way that you do your roller set so that kind of keeps it um, In place a little bit more so I'm gonna go ahead um, and if I feel like any of my hair is in the way you can just kind of use um, one of your duck bill clips um, I did remove the mustache from the front of it so it is missing that because uh, it was getting stuck on all the pins but um, it is the same same wig as in the other video so you can see um, this one I didn't use any end papers with and I kind of have these like crazy ends um, so I'm not worried about that because I know I can use my smoothing brush and put them all together um, but that is definitely one reason that if you actually used end papers that really doesn't happen um, quite as often but um, like I said I don't really like to use them so I'm really bad about it and I don't frequently use them um, so I think like one mistake that people do make with roller sets is that they will sometimes just kind of like leave it in this state um most roller sets you really do need to brush through like even if you want something that's like super curly you're probably going to need to go through and like pull the curls apart at least so don't ever feel like when you like take it out like this um usually you've got to at least go back in with your hands and kind of comb through it a little bit um so Basically when you pull them out, you just want to be gentle with it. You're going to like remove the pins and then you just kind of like, like I put both my fingers in the roller and I just kind of like roll it back down. If there's end papers, you'd remove the end papers as you're doing that. Just throw those out. Um, but you can see I definitely have some roller breaks. So roller breaks are just places where um, there's just like holes in the wig. Part of it for this wig um, is probably part of it is like how I rolled it, but then part of it is just like this thing is very bald <laughs> for some reason. So there's going to be... Um, certain places where there is just space that is not ideal um, but I'm pretty confident 
that once we brush through this, none of that's going to matter. So that's one reason that um, if you do have wigs that are a little bit weirder like that, that's a great reason to put a roller set in it, even if like you're just going to be like putting it in a bun or something. Um, a lot of times like this kind of movement, like you can kind of see, especially like with this one, it has this sort of like nice like S curve kind of going on. Something like that when it's like fanned out, that can really um, hide a lot of like the weird like bald places that could be in wigs. So I always think a roller set is helpful even if you're like not going for a super curly style, but um, certainly there's gonna be instances where maybe you don't have to do one, but I think that um, for the most part, they are a very helpful thing to do. And it's just good, um, a good thing to kind of get yourself in the habit of. So before you wanna remove any of your rollers, you do wanna make sure that your wig is dry, right? So I let this one just dry overnight. Um, and then I felt like it wasn't totally dry. So I did hit it with a blow dryer um, on low, but again, human hair, so it's okay for me to do that. Um, if you are doing a wig for a show or if it's just a style that you know like you're gonna wanna recreate for personal projects, um, I always take a picture of what the roller set looks like um, from the front, from each side, and from the back, um, just cause you always wanna have that reference cause if you were working on a show, um, you would have to go back and re-roll this wig at some point most likely um, and you want to make sure that you're putting the rollers in the same place so that you can recreate the same style um, once you get to that point and then I will often take a picture of what it looks like um, when I take it out of rollers I'm not using this wig for anything so I'm not super concerned with doing that but if this was a wig um, that I was doing for a show I would certainly go in and I would do front sides and back and then sometimes this one wasn't like that but sometimes you'll have these really like complicated roller sets um, where like the top of it might be a little bit like interesting or like it's a very specific placement. Um, always make sure you photograph that too. You just want to make sure that um, if you were like passing off this roller set to someone else that they would be able to completely understand what they were supposed to do if you weren't there to ask questions. Um, I've worked on shows where I've just done like wig maintenance before. I did not design the wigs. I did not initially style them. I was just given them and a giant like packet that explained exactly how to restyle them. It was so useful to have something like that. Um, so the more information you can give somebody and the more photos you have, the better off you're going to be. Um, and then another thing, so this wig block isn't labeled because again, it's not really for anything. Um, but it's a really good idea to always label it and say like who the character is and who the performer is. Um, and even have like the show name, like if you're working somewhere, like especially like um, there's a lot of theaters where like, um, especially like in summer theaters where they're doing like multiple shows at one time. Um, it's a good idea to have as much information on your block as you can too. So not only um, do you always know what you're working on, um, but again, if you're kind of like passing this off to somebody else or if you aren't there and you're sick and somebody else has to step in, um, they'll know exactly what they're looking for and exactly like where things go back. Um, it's a lot less likely I think things will get lost that way too. Um, and even like, like I worked on a show recently where they even had it like, um, sectioned off like on racks cause there were, we had like 30 wigs, um, and even facial hair and stuff beyond that. Um, and they had it like, uh, sectioned off where each specific person's like wig was supposed to go. I thought that was amazing. I've never worked somewhere, um, that's done something like that. And I think that that's really, really helpful. So really the more information, um, that you can provide always like the better off you're going to be. Um, and then, um, once you finish the complete style of it, you want to make sure you photograph that as well. And again, you're photographing the front, you're photographing the sides and the back. Um, if there's any kind of like complicated ways you have to pin something, that's a really good thing to do too. Um, whenever I style wigs and it's one that I know like it's for a show and I'm going to have to do maintenance on, especially if it's like an updo or something of that nature, I try to style it in sections. So that way I know like, um, you know, I have to redo six wigs today, but I don't have time to completely take them all apart. Um, so what I try to do is I try to make like whatever the front sections are, I try to make those kind of like easily detachable. So that way I know I can like pull those down, comb those through. Um, if this was like a bun, sweep it back over the bun and it's going to look like I spent the whole day like redoing it. Um, so it's really, it's a good idea if you can think about, um, ways to make your own life easier if you're doing wig maintenance because sometimes you are going to work on shows um, where there's like 30 plus wigs and there could just be like one of you that has to work on maintenance or something um, and it's really hard to get through that you know there's only so much that one person can do so the easier you can make things like that for yourself um, the better off you're going to be um, so depending on the style that you want like if I wanted these to stay like really really tight curls um, since these are bigger rollers, it's not necessarily going to do that, but for one that was like a straw roller set or something like that, um, or if I'm trying to get like a tighter curl texture, I would probably just sit there and I would just pull these apart um, with my fingers and then kind of like twirl it back together. So that's probably with like the way this wig is and the way I set it, that's not really going to be how it's going to want to style. Um, I think this wig is probably 
rolled a little bit too big to really get like a tight curl um, but the more you break it up the smaller the curls would get right so I could sit here and just do this forever um, I really love styling curly wigs I think it's super fun um, it can be really really tedious because you really do have to go through um, and really like pick apart each curl but really you can get such great like texture payoff when you do that um, so it certainly is worth it but we'll say if that's not necessarily um, what it is that you're going for you probably just want to go through and brush it through first so I'll usually try to do it um, like in sections um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip up the top and I'm gonna do it kind of like from this like bottom section up um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and like take this comb so get or this brush so this one is pretty kind of dead because <laughs> I kind of used it a little bit too much um, this past winter but again you can just really lightly like comb through it and then if you like take the curls and you wrap it around your hands that's gonna help like maintain the curl shape so all this is doing is kind of like brushing it together um, and kind of like unifying everything a little bit so this wig is probably gonna end up in more of a like um, wavy style than one that's going to be like super super curly um but I think it gets really scary to sit there and like brush something out after you just put all those curls in but um it's really easy to get the curls back if you have to if you're like oh I like wish I wouldn't have just like brushed all those together if you just like take one of these sections and you can take your little like smoothing brush take this over it and kind of like wrap that around your hands and twirl it and then your curl will come right back so I think that's one thing that it gets really scary um if you do completely like brush these out as you feel like you might lose the curls forever um, but I promise like these little smoothing brushes are gonna be your best friend for that so I could use this um, to help define my curls I could use this to help comb these all together even more um, and especially for synthetic hair I feel like having these as definitely like a lifesaver um, so I would say with the way this wig is um, it kind of seems like this little front part is gonna want to end up being sort of separate from the rest of it um, but you can see that just combing it together it really did get rid of those weird little like roller breaks that I have um, but say that it didn't and they're still there if you take like your little pick and like teasing comb um, what I will normally do is I'll kind of like pull these little pieces forward um, and then you can kind of just like back comb it which means you're just kind of like pushing the hair down essentially um, and then if you use the pick a lot of times that will also help you um, not only like can you go in and like lift it and like get a little volume but that's gonna help you um, kind of unify all those pieces as well so it's a good idea to have like these basic combs with you um, even if you're just doing something that seems like a little bit like more like on the simpler side like this kind of a wig would be um, but these really can make like a huge difference um, so you would want to just keep going through and sort of like brushing um, all of this out and we're just gonna try to get it to be um, more of like a wavy style but again for the ends um, they're gonna go crazy if you don't try to control them so I always try to go back um, and brush them back around but you can see you could keep it like looser like this or we could go for this nice like wave too so um, you really do have a lot of options I feel like when you're doing roller sets um, and again brushing out curls seems really really scary um, if the curls weren't set well there's always a possibility um, that they may not like go back like the same way that they were um, but I find that as long as you like let them dry and set up properly um, you really can get your curls back so if I can even sit here with these I've got these curls going um, and then up here I feel like this is one place a lot of times at the top of a wig um, which is a little bit hard to see with the angle that we have but sometimes if you just take your pick this is really good um, at kind of like unifying those areas because I feel like sometimes that's where we see a lot of breaks but you can also, even without teasing it, you can sit there and kind of like lift this up um, to get a little bit of volume. So if you really need a lot of volume, um, you would need to go in and tease. And then sometimes you can put little like rats, which are basically just like um, like hairnets full of hair or stuffing or whatever you have um, to get more volume. But a lot of times if you just need like a little bit of lift um, to make it look less flat and wiggy and make it look like a little bit more like it's actually like on somebody's head, just popping this under it is going to help you get... Um, just that little bit of lift so again for this one it's not necessarily um, going to be like a crazy precise style but um, I just wanted to kind of show what it would look like if you did like a really really basic like quick roller set um, and how you could brush one out um, the more roller sets you do the better you're gonna get at it I feel like it's one of those things that you can probably never do enough of 
Um, you can do them on people too. So it's not something that's like only done on wigs. Obviously it's going to be a bit of a different, um, situation if you're doing it on a person just because you can't be pinning things down. So the things that you're using are a little bit different. Um, but it's all kind of like the same concept. Um, and so again, if I just want this to be a little bit more together, um, I can go through and just kind of like take my hand. And again, if I would use end papers, some of these probably would be a little bit less crazy. Um, but since this wasn't really going to be for anything, um, I only did a couple with end papers just to kind of like demo it. And so again, and then if I feel like, oh, like those parts are a little bit too separated, I can just kind of go in and I can take this pick. So really, I feel like if I only had like a couple of combs, if I have like a good brush, um, my teasing pick, um, a rat tail comb, which this is more like I use this more with like roller sets, not necessarily with this style, um, and a smoothing brush with these four, um, and like a pair of scissors, you would be good to go, honestly. Like this is what you're going to need more than anything, and then probably like a wide tooth comb um, to comb your wigs out. But if you at least have those things, um, you'd be able to do quite a bit. So for this part, um, this gave us like a really nice kind of like wave situation here. Um, so I want to try to like retain that um, as much as I can. And so, um, you can see too with the way this wig is, there's a lot more hair on this side than there is on this side. Um, and I think this is definitely a wig that like, if I wanted it to be, um, styled this way, it would definitely need some kind of like pins in it to kind of help it stay, um, in place a little bit more. But, um, for this being the first time that I ever worked on this wig, I do feel like it, um, it did a pretty decent roller set. The hair is pretty agreeable. Um, I still don't really know where this wig came from, uh, but it ended up working out. So you can see like this front part, that's getting a little bit crazy. Um, so sometimes if you have that happening, um, I will just kind of like try to comb it all a little bit more together. Um, I feel like a lot of times with maintenance, if you just take like your little smoothing brush, um, it can really make like a world of a difference. Um, you can kind of see like, oh, they're kind of wanting to go in different directions. I probably rolled them in different directions since I wasn't really sure what this wig was going to be. Um, but we can see like, okay, if the front is being like a little bit um, unagreeable, this could always end up being like an updo or something like that. So since I didn't really have too much of a plan for this one, um, it's a little haphazard, I feel like in some places. Um, but this would probably be a decent like length um, and like start as probably like a little like 1950s wig or something like that um but yeah so from this point you would just kind of decide like um how you wanted to style it um you would want to throw like a little bit of hair product on it especially like on some of the ends I do like to take like a little bit of pomade um and kind of go through but hopefully um that makes a little bit of sense gives you a little bit of insight um into how you would um style a wig really basically or like basically like what like a basic comb out is um, this little crazy curl in the front is really, um, kind of upsetting me a little bit, but that's okay, um, since it's not anything for real. Um, but again, you would just sit here and just kind of keep, like, manipulating this until, um, it kind of did what you wanted. If it was a synthetic wig, you would be able to go in, um, and if you hit this with a little bit of steam, it would relax the curl a little bit. You just have to be careful, um, because if you put too much steam on it, it could straighten the whole thing out. Um, if you only re-roll, like, part of a synthetic wig and you put it in the dryer, even if you cover it, a lot of times it will, like, flatten everything. That happened to me recently. Um, I thought by braiding it it would be safe. Not always the case. So, um, be careful when you are working with synthetics. Um, but for this, if I hated it and it was having to go on stage, I could really just take, like, a curling iron or a hair straightener. Um, and I would be able to kind of fix this how I wanted. But, um, considering, yeah, for what this wig started like this isn't too bad I think it wouldn't be too horrible to kind of like pin back into some kind of like a little style like that and I think like this part would probably have to like um come up like this or something but um yeah so at this point since it's combed out I'd want to take a picture of it and then whatever my final style was um I would also take a picture of that and then that way you can kind of put everything in like a little binder um, and you would give any other like extra directions that you might have for somebody, um, any care notes. Obviously you would put down for sure if it was like synthetic or human, 
um if you have any like specific styling notes or like hey this person's allergic to like nuts so like don't use this hair product in it or something like that um or they're allergic to metal so be careful with pins um any little notes like that that's all great to kind of keep like in your little like show bible essentially um and i like to have like the roller sets in there um any allergies things like that uh makeup renderings the costume renderings hair research um they're usually gigantic binders but they're like the most helpful thing in the entire world um, but yeah, so hopefully this kind of helps make, um, roller sets and comb outs make a little bit more sense. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed this video.